Our next guest is a MacArthur Fellow and a pioneer in the world of dance and choreography. He uses human movement to explore deeper themes of race, injustice, and identity. Mm -hmm. Here to talk about his new suite of world premiere works at New York Live Arts is choreographer Kyle Abraham. Abraham in motion. Welcome. Uh, Kyle, funny. welcome. My goodness. So you're enjoying quite the ride. What's it been mm -hmm. like for you thus far? Um, it's all been All the crazy. attention has been... <laughs> wow. I mean, the New York Times has just been all over you. Yeah, it's, you know, it's a great blessing. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's... A, a certain point you get a little nervous thinking about how people are perceiving you or new audiences coming in to see the work for the first time. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of buzz which is really exciting for me and for the company alike. Um, but you want to feel as if you can, you're doing the right work and that the <clears throat> people are going to stand behind what it is you're currently doing. And I want to mm -hmm. get your title correct. Sure. Right now you are the resident commissioned artist at New York Live Arts which is, you know, we all know is a huge, huge honor. What's yes. it feel like to have this responsibility and how'd you land this gig? It's been really wonderful. Mm -hmm. uh, both Bill T. Jones, Carla Peterson, and Jean Davis and the like, uh, they've been really supportive of me as their resident commission artist. So give me space over the last two years to create my work uh, and even go to talk to them about um, logistical questions about how to really run a company and sustain a company. It's been really helpful. And your work there consists of two premier works, The Watershed and When, Wol and when the Wolves come Came In. Yes. So talk to us about that and what people can expect. Sure. Both works are inspired by Max Roach's 1960s album, We Insist Freedom Now Suite. Mm -hmm. So looking at that album, which was written as a response to the then 100th anniversary of the Emancipation Proclamation, yeah. uh, now 150 years past, thinking about where we're at currently and, and what, um, how important is that message and, and the passion in that music currently. So asking a composer, Robert Glassford, to create uh, an updated um, interpretation of the Roach Suite, you'll find that in uh, a work called The Gettin', which is part of When the Wolves Came In, and uh, an evening length work called The Watershed, which uses a lot of different music. There's some contemporary classical music, there's some Otis Redding, it's all kind of mixed in there and played around a little Barbara Mason as well. Uh, and, and the When the Wolves Came In program consists of three works in total. One, it's called Hallowed, a trio to some um, gospel hymns, really synonymous <coughs> during the 1960s, and uh, a work called When the Wolves Came In, which is a dance for about seven dancers as well. Walk us through your process. How does this work? Does it start with movement in your head? Do you start with the idea and then work from there? Yeah, I think generally speaking with these projects in particular, it was a lot of writing uh, ahead of time and reading, really wanting to make sure that I had a lot of facts in order and a lot of different inspiration. Uh, I was reading a lot of Howard Zinn books, just thinking about a different perspective on American history and mm -hmm. world history alike. Uh, and then going from there, listening again, of course, to the Max Roach albums, um, and trying to get all my collaborators on board. So having visual artist Glenn Ligon, who I'm a huge fan of, yes. collaborate on both programs. Um, my costume designers, Reed Bartlemy and Karen Young, really kind of trying to set up the team as soon as possible. And then going into the studio and trying to figure out what the movement can be and should be. Mm. Can you talk to us a little bit more about the inspiration behind it and development when you just started working on it? Sure. I started probably about two years ago okay. uh, making the dances and a lot of the time was really just spent uh, generating some movement and then having the dancers in the company, there's about nine dancers currently, having them kind of create variations of a dance phrase, which more or less means, let's say I, I make uh, maybe 10 seconds or two minutes worth of dance. I teach it to the dancers and then I ask them after they've learned it to figure out how they can kind of um, make, a, make it their own in some way. So I'll look at what they do and then try and blend that with what I'm doing. Wow, beautiful, beautiful. I hope so. <laughs> MacArthur Fellow. Yeah. Now we know that that process is very, um, you know, secret, if you will. So when you get that call and you find out that you've been chosen, what goes through your mind? I was laughing. Mm -hmm. I was crying. I, I was like, okay, somebody, somebody's playing a joke on me. Yeah. You know? uh, yeah. And at a certain point, it really clicks in. I'm like, I'm not going to have to pay any student loans no. ever mm. again yeah. in grad school and undergrad. That's a lot of loans. I know, because Sally Mae reaches out to me every month. Yeah, I'm like, I think she's family. <laughs> yeah. You know, <laughs> you know. I'll see Sally Mae. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Goodness. Was well, it true that your entire run is already sold out? Yeah, it's been sold out for a while. But, you know, the great thing is there's always opportunities. There's a waiting list that starts around 1 o'clock. Um, and, and the company's touring throughout the year. People can mm. go to our website, abrahaminmotion.org or .com, to find out where we're going next. We'll be um, at the ICA in Boston, um, Institute for Contemporary Art, and we'll be at Mass MoCA in Massachusetts, mm. and then UCLA, a lot of different colleges as well throughout the year. Wow. What's it like to have the legendary Bill T. Jones as someone that you can call upon? 
that's pretty remarkable. Mm -hmm. You know, there have been days when uh, I was creating a work for Hubbard Street Dance Chicago uh, over the summer, and Bilti would just call me on the phone to just say, I just want to see how you're doing. Really? Yeah, that, that's, that was really special to me. More than a lot of the other things that have happened in, in the last two years, that phone call in particular was really special. I grew up uh, admiring him and his work and kind of idolizing him, really. Mm -hmm. uh, reading his book, Last Night on Earth, yes. which is a wonderful, wonderful um, autobiography. And just knowing his process and getting to know him as a man and wanting to know that he actually is invested in what I'm doing, mm -hmm. that's really, really overwhelming for me. It's such a gift. Mm -hmm. So when were you first interested in dance and choreography? Uh, around when I was about 17. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I went, that's late. Yes, very <laughs> yeah. late. Yeah. Well, I went to go see the Joffrey Ballet in Pittsburgh, and I only mm -hmm. went to go see them because they were doing a whole evening of dances um, created to Prince's music. And I'm a Prince fan. They went through really? first album, favorite Prince everything. song. Well, it's not a popular one, but it's power fantastic. It's a B side. If you have the hits, the B sides. Uh, I don't know that song. The B sides, <laughs> track number twenty. <laughs> yeah, he knows yeah, it. He's like, yeah, twenty. Yeah. That's my that one and Anastasia. Those are two of my favorites. Uh, Anastasia oh, you really from Love are Sexy. Fan. Yeah, that's that's it. You know, it's he dropped two new albums earlier this I got week. Him. You got yeah, them I got them on Tuesday. Right. <laughs> so any choreography to Prince? My up? first dance I ever made was to Prince. Wow. Another Lonely Christmas. Yeah. Really? A silver unitard. I had braids. It's a look you don't want to see me repeat. <laughs> I need, need the picture. Yeah. Post that on Throwback <laughs> Thursday. Post that one. Yeah, some bootleg video. Yeah, yeah. It was a crazy, crazy time. Yeah. Well, oh, you God. clearly evolved since then. Yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd love to do something, of course, now to his music. And there have been times where I've actually used his music in the rehearsal, mm -hmm. but not on, on the stage. But to generate, help me generate material, I've used uh, a lot of my favorite songs. Computer Blue from the Purple Rain album. Because yeah. mm. that intro is... It's everything. Yeah. 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 Yes, yes. Ooh. Oh, I like, I like you. I know, yeah. I can't wait to see more. Look. Now, we also have to talk about the New York Times as they described your work as voluptuous movement phrases with touches of dance theater. Now, how would you define your choreography? You know, I always consider it to be like a postmodern gumbo. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I say that because I'm using a lot of different references. Starting dance at around 17, I was a big rave kid and, mm -hmm. and a big, you know, um, listen to hip-hop music, you know, some of my hip-hop taste is a little bit more obscure to some people, I think, like some of these West Coast groups like The Coup and things like that, mm -hmm. but um, just going out and social dancing was the start. But when I started studying dance, I just loved everything I was being taught from Martha Graham technique to Merce Cunningham, Jose Limon, yes. artists like a Bill T. Jones or a B.B. Miller or um, it's a newer generation of, of contemporary dance makers like a Faye Driscoll or mm -hmm. Anna Sperber. Those artists all inspire what it is I do and what I love. So when I'm creating work, I'm actually doing so using those references, but also coming from a place that's rooted in the social dance vernacular where you can just, just let everything go and just move. It's true. Mm -hmm. I mean, move. dance shouldn't necessarily be this rarefied world. It should be accessible, shouldn't yes, it? Yes, I hope so. It should be really all-inclusive, I all think. All right. Well, all right. thank you so much for being here. Oh, thanks for having we me. We can't wait to see your work. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations on all your success. Oh, thank you. And we'll MacArthur be, fellow. I know, right? So. All right. We'll be right back with more Rise Entertainment 360.